COVID-19 restrictions have had serious economic and mental health impacts on Canadians. Two, uh, COVID-19 restrictions have been advised by the federal government, <clears throat> including specifically by the Prime Minister, on three separate occasions in November of 2020 as temporary measures to alleviate pressures on the public health care system. Three, les outils de santé. Public health tools such as rapid test, shared data on how COVID-19 spreads, and vaccines have not been positioned as permanent solutions to replace COVID-19 restrictions by the federal government, including in areas of federal competency like air travel and border restrictions. Four. Of the United States and the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom have both released public plans for economic reopening, while Canadian officials have not yet given Canadians clarity on when regular economic and social life will be able to resume. The House calls the House call on the government to table within 20 calendar days following the adoption of this motion a clear, data-driven plan to support safely gradually and permanently lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. The Honourable Member for Calgary Nose Hill. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I will be splitting my time with the member from Edmonton Centre. Before I start, I just want to uh, tell Lynn Walker that this one's dedicated to her. Yesterday in the House of Commons, I asked the Health Minister what I thought was a very simple question, a nonpartisan question, which was, when can fully vaccinated seniors give their grandchildren a hug? And the answer that we got back from the Health Minister a year into the pandemic um, was, uh, could be summarized as, I don't know, I'm not sure I want to tell you about this, I think it's a provincial jurisdiction, but I'm going to give the province's advice. And that's not what Canadians want to hear. I think that that answer encapsulates best the need for this motion. We're a year into COVID-19, and enough is enough. A year ago, you know, Canadians from coast to coast pulled together and said, yep, we've got to shut down the economy, we've got to, we've got to undertake these restrictions to buy public health experts and all of us here in this place, provincial governments, municipal leaders, buy us time to figure out what COVID-19 was, how it spreads, who is most vulnerable, and develop tools to permanently combat it, like therapeutics, rapid tests, and vaccines. And a year into the pandemic, those tools now exist. The problem is, is that in Canada, we have not had clear guidance from our health officials on the circumstances on which widespread mass lockdowns can safely end. That's a huge problem. For somebody who is watching this today, they need to understand that no level of government in Canada has issued any advice on what fully vaccinated people can do. The only thing that the federal government has said to date on this when asked is that vaccinated persons still have to go into uh, um, controversial quarantine hotels. The federal government has to at least tell people what the plan is to develop benchmarks on how these tools are going to bring freedom, bring prosperity, and bring normalcy back to Canadians' lives. And today, we are calling upon every member of this House to support the federal government developing a plan within 20 days on the benchmarks by which these tools can be used in order to let life get back to normal. We all acknowledge that it is important to combat the spread of COVID-19, that it is important to protect people from serious illness and to prevent death. We have been doing that for the last year all of us in this place. But what is missing now is hope for the future. Canadians have no idea when lockdowns are going to end, and that has to stop. 
Why does that have to stop? It's not just me asking for this. You know, we have Unifor asking for a national recovery plan uh, to include border, uh, adapting border restrictions to safely reopen borders. We've got the Canadian Federation for Independent Business. We've got the Tourism Industry Association of Canada. News of COVID vaccine distribution gives us a reason for cautious optimisms. However, we need to plan for the recovery of Canada's tourism industry now. The Fitness Industry Council of Canada is asking for a plan. Mayors are asking for plans. Everybody's asking for a plan. And it's not just stakeholders that are saying this. It's also medical experts. Medical experts are saying, we can't just live in a bubble and have a life of no risk. Everything we do has consequences. We need a better path forward that uses these tools to protect Canadians' health while also ensuring that life gets back to normal. These are stories from the CBC. So, so, so the federal government has to do this. They have to deliver this. This is, this is probably the most critical thing that the federal government could do right now, is deliver a plan with benchmarks on how lockdowns can be gradually, permanently, and, sa and safely lifted. We don't have that. How can businesses plan to reopen if they don't know the circumstances under which they're, they're going to do that. Can you imagine being a restaurant owner right now where every day in the news it's like, well, we might lock down again, we might not. Public health officials haven't even been clear on data on how, on where, where transmission is occurring and if we're applying these tools to the most vulnerable places. It just, a lot of Canadians are saying it seems like a lot of reactive measures and a lot of guesswork. And you know what? Canadians have pulled together. Canadians have sacrificed a lot. But the federal government has to stop asking Canadians to sacrifice normal life. They have to stop asking uh, people to stop sacrificing hugs, their mental health, safety at home. They have to stop asking people to sacrifice that. And they have to start giving them a plan for hope. This is how we are going to reopen. These are the benchmarks. These are, this is what we're using. This is how we're doing this. And it, other countries around the world are already doing this. Iceland this week has said, if you're vaccinated, no quarantine for you. Come on in. The United Kingdom, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has issued a reopening plan with benchmarks. And under the Biden administration, the United States, um, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci and the CDC have issued guidelines on what vaccinated persons can do. They're, they're tying, they've set an aspirational target that July the 4th, Independence Day in the US, and this is Anthony Fauci. The United States is going to have a normal Independence Day. Why, like, why can't we have that here in Canada? Why can't we have nice things too? Again, I wanna reemphasize that the federal government has not told Canadians what they can and can't do if they've received a vaccine. They have not told airlines when they are going to have any sort of plan for safe border reopening. And we have, we can't, like this can't be a taboo topic anymore. The federal government is spending billions of dollars, billions of dollars on lockdown restriction measures. So they have a responsibility to do this. Now, the federal government today, all of the liberals that stand up and talk to this, they're going to say it's not our job. It's the federal government, it's, or it's the provincial government. Here's a big problem with that. We are in an emergency crisis situation and it is the federal government's job to lead on this because they are spending billions of dollars that we don't have to support continued lockdown restrictions with no plan to end them. Problem number one, to refute their talking points. Number two, there are many times the Prime Minister has come out and asked for lockdown restrictions that are within provincial jurisdiction. On November the 24th, the Prime Minister said, the federal government is working with the provinces so that they can impose restrictions. He said that again on November 10th in a CTV article. Canadian Press, November 13th, that was just a few, few quotes that I pulled from him. And yesterday in the House of Commons, the House Health Minister in that question that I referenced around hugs said that their work, the federal government is working with province and territories 
to develop guidance with support from the federal government on restrictions. So they can't suck and blow. They can't say, oh, you know, it's politically convenient for us ahead of a potential election that nobody but they want to offload this responsibility to the provincial government. And like, like, bureaucrats who are watching the speech, if you are a bureaucrat in Health Canada and you are advising the minister that it is not your job to provide guidance on this, then why are we paying your salary? To the health minister, if you're not asking your department for guidance on this, thousands of bureaucrats, then why are we paying your salary? We need hope. We're not saying that we should just, you know, just willy-nilly do anything. What we're saying is that the federal government has to start issuing direction on this. The, the airlines, hospitality and tourism, retail, marginalized community, women who are having domestic violence issues, we need this plan. This should be a no-brainer. The motion that we've got in front of the House of Commons today, it's asking for a data-driven plan. It, this is what the ask is, that we call on the government to table within 20 days following the adoption of this motion, a clear data-driven plan to support safely, gradually, and permanently lifting COVID-19 restrictions. You know, I, I, I said that I dedicated this to my friend Lynn. Her husband passed away it, she didn't even get to see him when he went in for his heart attack. Uh, people should not have to say goodbye to their loved ones over FaceTime. The federal government needs a plan, and every person in this House, every Canadian should support this motion. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Government House Leader. Yes, yes thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker. It's truly amazing in terms of how the member has this uh, consistent attitude of uh, what I believe is misleading and providing false information. Is the member trying to indicate to those that are following this debate uh, that the federal government is responsible for uh, lifting lockdowns or the restrictions, my understanding, according to the Constitution, is that it is the provinces. Canada is a vast country with many regions. It is the provinces that put in the restrictions. Is it the Conservative Party's policy that Ottawa should start overriding provincial jurisdiction? Can she give a clear indication on her thoughts on that issue? I remember Calgary knows you. The federal government has full jurisdiction on the quarantine hotel debacle that has seen sexual assaults occurred. So yeah, it's kind of their job on that issue. Also, I want to quote the member of parliament from Whitby, who tweeted out that it was criminal negligence if, uh, if provinces didn't impose lockdowns. The federal government has been all over this. The reality is, is, think about how disgusting this is, is that billions of dollars, thousands of bureaucrats, a year later, the federal government is saying, it's not my job. It's Legault's job, it's Doug Ford's job, it's Jason Kenney's job. We're not going to provide you any support on this, any guidance. All we're going to do is have the Prime Minister come out to Rideau Cottage, say, well, you know, I think you should lock down more than let their Liberal backbenchers uh, tweet out stuff like that. They can't suck and blow. Nobody wants partisanship. That's what we just heard from the federal government. And that, they're spreading misinformation too. What we need is a plan, and every person in this place should support it. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member Sandish Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thanks to my Honourable Colleague. Uh, I'm reading the Conservative Party motion. I'm not out of sympathy at all with the sentiments expressed by my honorable colleague. I read with great interest the feature in McLean's magazine written by Steve Marr. It's clear mistakes have been made. But on the other hand, I don't see how I can vote for a motion that calls for a plan within 20 days to permanently lift COVID restrictions. I certainly agree with the honorable member. We should have good advice as to whether when we're vaccinated, we can hug our grandkids. But that's not the motion before us. And I asked her to explain the difference between her speech and the actual wording of the motion. The uh, member for Calgary, Nosil. Well, I would ask the member to avail herself to read the ask. It's not saying lift restrictions in 20 days. It's saying have a plan on the benchmarks that would be used to lift restrictions. So she needs to read the motion. Questions and comments? The other member for Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. 
I do want to remind the Honourable Member for uh, Sanish Gulf Islands that uh, she's not uh, to use the mic uh, to rebuttal. Um, <laughs> And I know that this has been mentioned on a number of occasions. The Honourable Member for Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. Point of order. As a matter of privilege, Madam Speaker. Point of order. The Honourable Member for Sanish Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I should have said point of order before speaking. When an Honourable Member impugns the thoroughness of the work of another Honourable Member, that is a point of I, uh, I would like to hear what the Honourable Member has to say before everybody else uh, continues to chime in. Uh, the Honourable Member for Sanjay Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I apologize for not saying clearly point of order before. Uh, I was the member for Calgary Nose Hill, and I've worked together for many years. I think she knows that I'm an honorable person. And if I said I've read the motion, and I don't think the motion accords with her speech, I have read the motion. I do not need to avail myself of reading the motion. The motion does not say the things that the honorable member said we should vote for. I would have, uh, so that's my issue, Madam Speaker. Thank you. I appreciate the information provided. I think that. Um, most of this is uh, basically a point of debate. Uh, and uh, so I will go to questions and comments. Questions and comments. Questions and comments. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Yes, I'm only stepping in here, Madam Speaker, because we've had the Speaker rule a number of times on how people can use their mic in Zoom in a way that they can't use it in the House. And I think the Member for Saanich Gulf Island just showed that abusive process. So I think that when you're reminding people about the use of Zoom mics, they can actually override the ability of Parliament to do its work. And I would caution the member of Sandwich Gulf Islands not to abuse that privilege. I, uh, I appreciate the information provided by the Honourable Member for Thames James Bay, and I did raise this uh, prior to uh, her, uh, prior to the member of Sandwich Gulf Islands uh, asking for a point of order thereafter. Uh, resuming the questions and comments, the Honourable Member for Couch and Malahat Langford, a brief question, please. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Thank you to the member uh, for Calgary Nose Hill for her interventions. And I, I very much um, empathize with uh, what she is uh, saying in her speech. And, you know, I need to give a shout out to our own public health officials for the job that they've done here in British Columbia. I wanted to ask her uh, specifically about the impossible choice that many workers have in this country when they're trying to decide between their income and their health. And does she have any thoughts on how the federal government can step in and show leadership in providing paid sick leave so our workers uh, can be assured that they don't have to make that impossible choice as a part of this economic recovery? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Calgary knows. He'll a brief answer, please. Any sort of plan on how we safely and permanently lift restrictions could include a variety of measures to incent people to follow public health outcomes, certainly. We also need a plan on how we're moving forward. A clear data-driven plan to support safely and gradually per and permanently lifting COVID-19 restrictions is something that we should all get behind. This is a no-brainer, and I hope every member here realizes that in five years we'll be looking back at this debate and going, I'm so glad this motion passed, or accounting for why it didn't. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Edmonton Centre. 